Hello everyone, we hope you're doing very well. We're looking again today at combined arms and the in particular the LHA Tawara oh, I'm never gonna be able to say this. Tarawa. There's just some complex, I just can't say it. Which you guys will know as uh, in DCS as the aircraft carrier that you can take and operate from in the Harrier. It's landing assault craft L H A Tarawa class. Now we think Tarawa is named after an island that was in conflict in the Pacific campaign, the Americans and the Japanese, but I stand to be corrected on that. And uh, as ever, we've got our naval man Daishi. Say hello, Daishi. Hello. And Daishi has put bucket loads of, as he always says, he does all the work, I just put the video together. Uh, he's done all the work behind this and there are pages, so many pages of info as you'll see. It's going to be a really complex video because it's a really complex craft. So go and get your cup of tea, go and get your coffee, sit back, relax and we'll all learn together. So that's the bird, that's the uh, actual Tarawa as we can see there. Uh, is, that, is that hull number one, Daishi, for this class? Yep, it's the uh, the first one. Oh, well, just it's the first one of this class. Right, class. Details. The landing helicopter assault, so LHA, was designed to combine the roles of the, of the LPH, LPD, and LKA, Halo Platform, Well Deck, and Supply. This class was also given an extensive command and control facilities due to lack of LCC, Landing Control Craft Control, available. This class of ship comes with an extensive setup for an amphibious assault on the shoreline. This includes a large flight deck and hangar for many helicopters, V-style aircraft, so we're talking about the, uh, the Harrier in our case, and landing boats. It also sports extensive facilities for a reinforced marine battalion of about 2,000 men, including a 460 square meter room for training and climatization, a 352 bed hospital well uh, with four operating rooms, 3,134 square meters for vehicle parking near the well deck and 3.3 thousand meters squared of pallet cargo holds. So, it's, it's so this is a real multi-function vessel then, isn't it? And I'm amazed it's, so, it's got so much to it, but okay. This class would see multiple various upgrades over the years and has been pro proposed to be used as a V-style aircraft carrier or even to convert one of these class of ships into a light aircraft carrier. This ship class was not originally intended for newer craft such as the LCAC and needed its well deck to be widened to accept it. The ship was named after the World War... Oh, you're right, the World War II Battle of Tarawa. DCS specific info, Tarawa class landing assault craft. Pas What's Pascagoula? Where's that? Uh, Pascagoula, that's a uh, ship. That's a uh, town... Roger, I had no type of saying that. MS, Mississippi, question mark? Yeah, Mississippi. Right, yard number 4101, LHA1, Tarawa, laid down. Wow, what, 1971? I thought we were talking 90s here. Okay, so in late 1971, launch 73, commissioned 73. I had no idea that we were at this time of history, so that's interesting. Nine were planned, five were completed, one was scrapped, one was Syntex. Syntex. do you want to go over Syntex quickly, Daishi? Uh, sneak X is when you use a ship for like target practice to see what weapons do to a ship. Roger, and we've got th and three in reserve. The Tawara being requested, the actual hull number one being requested as a museum ship, but I believe it's not set up yet. Uh, general characteristics: displacement uh, standard, twenty-six to twenty-seven thousand tons, and full up to forty-one thousand tons. So that's pretty heavy. It is pretty heavy for a relatively what I thought was a relatively small ship. We're in kind of battleship territory here, aren't we? That's interesting. A length 250 meters, beam 32 meters, and a draft of just under 8 meters, and a speed of 24 knots max. So that's quite fairly slow compared to some of the big carriers, even of the time. What did we recently look at? We looked at was it Yorktown? We looked at. Uh, yeah. That was that was oh, that was 34 knots, wasn't it, or, or, or close to there? But anyway, let's carry on. Range 10. Thousand, I'm guessing that's nautical miles at cruise. That's a high, quite a high cruise speed, 20 knots from what I've seen, actually. That's not bad. Crew of 975 to 1073, depending on its operation. Engineering, this is where this is where my bit of interest really kicks in. Two times combustion engineering, V2M-VS boilers connected to 
two times Westinghouse steam turbines. This is what my grandfather used to do. He used to do these steam turbines um, in the mid-50s, which went literally into these ships. Um, is that uh, 70,000 horsepower gross, i.e. both of them? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's up by yeah. each. Yeah, we've got 40,000 tons, 70,000 horsepower. That equals about 24 knots from what I've seen. Two propeller shafts, one bow thruster. So is that for docking? Sort of. You, why did you use it to get like a tight turn? So it's like you get this close to the shoreline and you fire the bow thruster to get a tight turn to focus the back and open up the well deck. Roger, understood. Right, so here's where it starts getting complicated. It's going to be a complicated vessel, so let's just punch through it. Electronics. The color notes believed most modern setup. Because, as you know from these ships, they change throughout the years. You know, they, they, they go back in, they get recommissioned with new stuff. So, okay, makes sense. So, new SPS 53. Uh, it's 200 meters, 37 kilometers. is a search and navigation radar, so that's a civilian radar, yeah? I think it's more military, but... Okay. Might... Maybe, yeah, yeah, okay, gotcha. SPS 52 Bravo, which was 400 meters to 444 kilometers, that is a long way. Um, an altitude of 0 to 30k, that's going to be meters. Uh, it's a 3D air search with IFF implemented. So you get 3D radars on ships, very rarely on aeroplanes. Uh, maybe the AWACS has it, I don't, I've never looked into it, but ships we do. Okay, so does this mean that that was on there at 95 to 99? Is that what the next line means? Uh, that was when it was removed. Some of this stuff is original equipment that was removed over time. I see, right. Okay, fine. So that would have been removed in the 90s for whatever reason. SPS 10F, 400 meters, 74 kilometers. A surface search with IFF and limited air search. So this is our surface search radar removed in the 90s. So some of these were, you know, 1970s stuff then. And, you know, once it's 30 years old, it's not much good, presumably. Uh, modern SPS-40 Bravo 900, or one click to 407 kilometers, two-dimensional air search with IFF. So we've now got a 2D uh, search with IFF. Um, so I don't know why they went from 3D to 2D for the modern one. It'd be interesting if anyone knows that. Next, we have SPN-35 Alpha, 400 meters to 74 kilometers, again, up to 90,000 feet. Carrier controlled aircraft approach radar with IFF. Okay. Oh, an LN6, 6, 6, 400 meters to 60 kilometers, surface search and navigation. So that's been replaced, it looks, by the SPS 53. Interesting that the older radars had a lot more range than the newer ones. I wonder why that is. That's interesting. Uh, and that went in 95 uh, to 99 again. SPG-60, uh, it's a 200 meter to 90 kilometers, up to 90,000 feet radar for Mark 86 fire control system for the Mark 45 guns. Uh, what's the difference between kind of white and beige color? Uh, white and beige is just normal color scheme. You notice the green ones also got like a light dark color, so that's just... Well, jump. Yeah, we've got Separation. To... So this went uh, out in the 90s, or late 90s as well, for the, for, for the gun. Is the gun gone now then? Yeah, they removed all the guns. Oh, I think it's God. because... Remove all the fun stuff. Most, yeah, I think it's because most of the escorts would have these guns on it, so it's like they just used it for other things. Okay, fair point. Or to space. Old SPQ-9 Alpha, 2.6 kilometers to 37 kilometers, up to 600 meters altitude, a 3D surface and air target indicator radar with TWS. Is that track or scan? Yep. For Mark 86 fire controls for, for the gun, basically. So is that for shooting aircraft down with a Mark 45 gun? Yep, if necessary. How interesting. Okay. Uh, probably won't be in DCS that, but we'll see. Four times Mark 95. So what we're looking at here is the real thing. Not all of this goes into DCS, obviously, because it's, you know, it's not a ship simulator at the end of the day. Four times Mark 95. All right, so this is 200 meters to 120 kilometers up to 90,000 feet target. Illuminator for Sea Sparrow. So it's going to be the kind of like the AIM-7 equivalent then that went into ships. So this is probably what we will see in DCS. It also has an electro-optical sensor. Uh, 150 kilometers range. That's interesting. I didn't realize we had an EO sensor for uh, Sea Sparrow. So th th basically th those are the radars for the Sea Sparrow, right? Yeah, and the thing is, is that this is the exact same missile as it's fired from the ships or from airplanes, which oh, um, I'm sure he's a good figure eight so, so great. 
Roger, yeah, absolutely. Very easy to beat. And that went in 95.97. Okay. WLR1 ECM, 900 kilometers. Right. I'm going to need you to take over. What's ESM? E Ele electronic support measures. It's got some sort of over the horizon targeting detection with possibility for ECM. Well, that part's most likely not over the horizon. Roger, so this is, is this going to be another one of these big integrated systems, presumably, that has various factors? Uh, Why well, it gets replaced? <laughs> oh, everything fun goes off the ship. It's just turned into a floating hull. Okay. Oh, no, this thing's better than when, or what replaces it. Okay, fair enough. I noticed some of these things have got a plus and some have got a minus down them. Uh, is that big? Uh, minus is, is away. added. I understood, right. Yeah, sorry, it took me a while to get that, but plus is added, right. Added, 86 to 88, an SLQ32 version 3 with an unknown range. It's uh, electronic support measures and ECM system. Okay, that probably is in there in DTS. Added 86 to 88, four times, Mark 36, SRBOC, chaff and IR decoy launches, two sets of three tubes, different angles. Um, and we've got uh, 25 to 36 what was that, cartridges per launcher. Uh, that's 25 to 36, like there's some stowage for... Or shaft, so you can reload it. Oh, right, understood. Anything else you want to say about these launchers at this point? I've seen some pictures of what they can launch, but I haven't been able to find uh, the same stuff like I can for Russians. So it's some of the same stuff where you've got like a, what look like those giant fire spouting things is on there, and it's got um, like a large plume of shaft that you can launch out to. It's really sizable compared to what you launch out of a... Uh, SU, uh, the SUs and the fighters. Added early 90s, a Mark 90, believed to be the SeaWiz radar. Oh, okay. Are they not? I didn't think SeaWiz radar. Uh, SeaWiz has their own independent radar, don't they? But is this a, yeah. a mutual radar? Uh, no, this is. This is the radar on a unit. Uh, one of my sources actually specifically listed it, which was unusual. I'm like, okay, yeah. cool. Okay, this one's beige, but it's plus. So is that added or added in the... Okay, we're added in the early 90s, two times Mark 23, Mod 3, TAS, 2D, Sea Sparrow, and RAM target direction finding radar with IFF. You better explain that one to me. RAM is the missile that effectively replaced the Sea Sparrow for a while. Oh. So basically... Uh, as you'll find it re later, it's like a passive uh, missile, so it just points uh, the launcher towards the target. Uh, taken away in 95-97 was two times. Uh, that's the same thing, taken away five years later, wasn't it? Okay. Right, added 95 to 99, a mark, 23 mod, 3, so the same thing's added back in again, is it? But only one, 2D Sea Sparrow plus RAM target identifying with IFF, okay. Added 95 to 99, SPS 67 V3, we've had this one, haven't we? Maybe not. No, that's something else. 400 meters, 65 kilometers, surface search and navigation. Added 95.99, SPS 48E, 4 to 410 kilometers, 90,000 feet. 3D air long -rand, long range search radar with IFF. Okay, Roger. Added 95.99, SPM 43B, 400 meters to 130 kilometers, 90,000 feet. Shipboard air control radar with IFF. 9599 SPS 64V9 400 meters to 37 kilometers surface search and navigation 95 to 99 SLQ 25A Nixie heard of that two kilometers max towed decoy which makes which makes loud noise and can return active torpedo pings but amplified do you want to go over that Doishi? yep uh what this is it's a reusable decoy it'll, it'll make noise to attract torpedoes and this one has the ability to listen to the active ping of a torpedo and send it back to it a bit louder to be like, oh, that's where my target is. Right. I told CCS, haven't heard of this before, combat control for planning, coordinating, monitoring amphibious landings. What's that, do you know? Uh, that's basically landing on shore. It, as you guys will see later, there's a lot of ships on and helicopters and such on us. This is just used to coordinate all that mess. Right. Okay. So that's re that's electronics, and that's been really that's probably the most complicated one we've seen so far. So many changes, different changes of use, different changes of technology. But well done for you know trying to make some sense of that. My favourite bit, armament, and it's not going to have a great deal because it's. I'm guessing it's got no offensive armament. Am I right in saying that? Is it defensive only, ignoring the air? Yeah, a lot of it's pretty much point defence. Okay. Right. So, name again. These are going to be different eras again. So we're going to do our best. Two times eight. 
Sea Sparrows, AIM 7s essentially, 16 plus in the magazine, uh, range 15 to 22 kilometres, about mm, 15 miles, something like that, max um, altitude based. Uh, 41 kilo frag uh, blast fragmentation warhead, it's quite big actually. Uses the same missile as the AIM 7 proxy fuse, uh, something rod with blast radius of 8.2 meters, 4 point defense, okay. Uh, and that died in... Uh, did that go away in 95, 97? Yes, it must have, mustn't it? Yeah. Okay, next we've got the, uh, the Mark 45 5-inch, 1, 2, 5mm gun. Uh, what's 600 EA? Is that rate of fire? Uh, 600 rounds each. 600 rounds each, understood. Um, how many guns do they have, then? Or just one they gun? had three. Wow, okay, cool. Range 24 kilometers is quite impressive. Uh, 61 kilo high. Oh, you're gonna have to go over these warheads. Okay. Um, your uh, high explosive penetration depth, a uh, high explosive var variable time, which that's effectively like a radar round, mm -hmm. and then the uh, HE EVT. I think that's about roughly the same. Then you got an illumination round. That's like your Willy Pete, mm -hmm. and then a uh, high explosive infrared. Main gun used on many U.S. ships, including uh, God, uh, guided missile cruisers. I can't remember what CGN is. Destroyers, guided missile destroyers, and LAHAs. Okay, very good dive sheet. Six times one Mark eighty Mark sixty seven. What's a Mark sixty seven? Oh, that's a small arms. That's for like small ships and such, or like boats and such. If they try to right, got it. Yeah, two times two hundred round. Uh, mags probably box I, I presume 100 and, oh you're gonna have to talk about the payload I don't understand that armor piercing tracer high explosive incendiary and what caliber is this gun by the way I think it's 20 millimeter roger so it's still thumping great guns still cannons basically okay uh so mount using mark 16 small arms converted for triple uh, anti-air guns for small craft use can switch ammo types, AB Tracer, H incendiary, and incendiary rounds. Okay. Oh, that's what INC is. <laughs> yeah. So deleted uh, 98, 99. So there's six of those. We think they're 20 mil. Added on at the same time, it will replace eight times half inch. Uh, what are these? Is Mark twos? Mark three? Yeah, Mark twos. Uh, two kilometer effective range. Wow, seven kilometers max. That's the type of ammo. It's M2 mounted on heavy machine gun mounted heavy machine gun used widely every everywhere see something sources for all ammo types right so added in the 90s two times six barreled mark 15 phalanx seawiz with 3.5 uh, these are radar guided yes of course they are uh, 3.5 kilometers max that's the ammo type so this is 20 mil phalanx system uh, close in weapon system for surface to surface missiles and anti-air point defense that many rounds per minute based on the version okay these seem pretty puny now and now we're used to the russian 30 mil um god what are they called cash tans don't they yeah i don't i can't remember if they shoot as fast i don't i think it's more of this is about more of velocity and rounds per minute whereas they just do the russian thing where it's just pound them as hard as possible what have we got here two times 21 rolling airframe missile rolling i've never heard of this ram 42 in the magazine. Um, okay, let's carry on. Nine kilometers, so much slower than the Sea Sparrow. Very small blast frag warhead. A rolling missile that uses a passive radar, IR, or both for point defense against surface to surface missiles. I wonder if we're going to get this. Used AIM 9 motor, so a sidewinder motor, warhead, and fuse, and the Stinger IR sensor. How interesting. So, rolling yeah. air. Why is it called rolling airframe missile? What have I missing there uh because the u.s version uh rolls when it's flying so think of it as like if you watch american mm -hmm. football or something and they throw the pass and they try to spin them this is roughly the same idea right well it's green so we in theory should have it but i i don't know we'll just yeah. see i suppose right fine it should it you'll find that if you get closer they are extremely quick turning though they got like a quick a tight turning radius in the 2000s four times one added in the 2000s one mark 38 uh multiple one bowser bushmaster 400 uh box 400 rounds in a box each three kilometers effect seven kilometers max oh you're gonna have to do the fuses you know i can't do those fuses <laughs> yep okay we got armor piercing piercing dispensing sabo 
high explosive incendiary, and then semi armor piercing, high explosive incendiary. All of them got, come with tracer options and frangible armor piercing discarding salvo. Was a chain gun as well, like a 20 mil chain gun. Um, 200 to 500 RPM cyclic can support numerous ammo types. Armor piercing, discarding. Okay, like you've said there. Cool. Uh, that is that automated? That's probably automated, isn't it? Or radar driven again? Or I think these either are or they're manually fired. I can't remember what. Okay, there's four of them. That's probably what we have on ours. We'll say right. Very good. Well, if you thought the complex bit was over, it's not. It just starts getting complex now. So these are boats and landing craft, Daishi. And I yep. see them. You've got the LCAC, the LCU-1610, the LCM-8, the LCM-6, the LVTP-5, uh, the LVTP-7. The LCAC stands for Landing Craft Air Cushion. So this is the hovercraft hmm. that you've ever seen. That. Okay. Yep. So you're telling me this thing, this hovercraft is 185 tons? Yep. Wow. It's big. Okay. Uh, right. So there's the size of it. It's massive. 90 feet long uh speed 40 knots awesome uh, wow 70 knots maximum unbelievable i guess that's why it's so useful and it can land on beaches 200 miles range so this would be taking troops and stuff to the yep, beach troop supplies armor whatever you need wow cool man this ship's awesome uh cargo 60 long tons or 17 five and overload so you could you could almost take a battle tank in that weapons uh two times Brown M2s, two mounts for M2 Brownings, Mark 19 Mod 3 grenade launchers, 40 mic mic, I think, M60 machine gun, tested with Gal uh, 13 Gatling guns. Cool. Immediately love the LCAC. LCU 1610 uh, is a. What is an LCU 1610? Yep, a uh, landing craft utility. This is just a general purpose. Right, so we've got a big version and a small version by the looks of it, of that size. That draft, 1,000 horsepower, probably a diesel. Uh, speed is 11 knots. It's slow, whatever this, whatever an LCU is. Range, slow and efficient. Uh, 1,200 kilometers or 2,200 kilometers on speed. 14 crew. The hovercraft was 5 crew. Troops, 400. Right, troop carrier. Cargo, 183 tons, 2 tons branded machine gun. So we've got a very slow moving. Um, that was LCM-8. Uh, landing craft mechanized, or I think it's landing craft Mark 8, one of the two. Okay, so we've got 58 tons to 113 tons, uh, 73 feet, so it's still a big old bitch. Um, it's got light, it's got its draft of up to 5 feet, power unknown, 12 knots, five, uh, 9 knots full, 190 kilometers, uh, complement 4 to 6, cargo 54 tons, two machine guns. So, sorry, what, what did you land a mechanized vehicle? What does it do? Climb up onto the beach with the troops in, or? Yep, I can. Yep, the uh, LCU and LCMs are designed to go up to the beach. It's got a front door that hinges down, and then you can uh, release your troops or cargo, or like if you got a Humvee or something. Marjoram. LCM 6 is going to be a smaller version of it 65 tons, 56 tons, 14. Uh, length. Sorry, I got that completely wrong. 65 tons, 56, a bit smaller. Power, kind of around 400 horse shaft horsepower, speed of 9 knots, it's a slow mover, 130 mile range, complement of 5, 80 troops, or 36, about 34 tons of cargo, 2 machine guns, flamethrowers as you do, or 105 mil guns, wow, interesting piece of kit. Yeah, that, that one's from Vietnam when the cool thing to do is to burn everything. Roger, LVTP, LVTP5, what's that? Landing vehicle tracked uh, personnel. Think of a BMP and you won't be too far off. At 37 tons of a length of 9 meters. Uh, okay, 700 horsepower. Can go really, uh, so not very fast. 45 kilometers, 11 kilometers water. Right, uh, yeah, I'm getting a feel for what this is. 360, uh, 306 kilometers land, 90 kilometers water with a crew of three. So it's kind of a BMP type thing with 34 troops. That's a lot. Um, and just a 30 cal machine gun. Um, the 7 version, aka AAVP. Oh, we've got this in DCS. We've got this in DCS, Daishi, AAVP7. Oh, nice. Um, it's 90 tons. Uh, sorry, 20 tons. Oh, come on, brain. 30 tons. I never knew it was that big. 8 meters long, and I've blown plenty of them. 400 horsepower. It's going to be a diesel. Speed, you've got there. It's actually a pretty useful Vic. 
uh, nearly 500 kilometers on the land, uh, 40 kilometers in the water, and it does indeed have a 40 mic mic grenade launcher and a Mark 85 heavy machine gun. Very interesting. Right, now we really kick off. Uh, we've got the aircraft here, and I don't think we're going to have time to go through every single stat here, but what we can do is we will be linking this um, sheet for your viewing purposes in uh, the video description here. So let's see what we can do, Daishi. Anything you want to say about this before I start kicking off? I tried to make it as general as possible, but there's several different helicopters. Light lift, medium lift, heavy lift. Uh, it's got a tech helicopter, got like a, a, a mine uh, sweeper option for the heavy lift and a uh, area. It's a uh, passive up to 46 aircraft, so it depends on the mission of the aircraft stored sample layout that. Uh, okay, so we've got the Huey, we've got the UH-1H in um, in DCS. N, I'm guessing, is a naval version of a Huey, almost certainly. Yeah, slightly a little later, but Roger, yeah. Range 250 nautical miles. Speed is, yeah, about what we get in DCS. There's your crew, uh, there's your passenger and cargo to take off, service ceiling. Wow, 17,000 feet, I've never got that high. Um, and we can have a Gal 16 uh, is that a Gatling gun? No, it's no, a lightweight yeah, M2. That's the, that's the M2, right, got it. Or we can have uh, twin mini guns, um, and you can have these on the side as well, as you remember. Or the M240 later on, lightweight machine guns, um, and seven or 19 tube uh, Hydra rockets, as we know from DCS. Note, twin engine member of the UH-1F. Oh, right, so this is why it can go so high. It's got two engines as opposed to one. Built on the, probably in case one goes and you can't land it in the sea, obviously. U.S. Marine Corps specifications can be used for cargo troops. I wish we had this um, UH-1N in DCS because it's so brilliant. Huey we've got in DCS, but it's so puny for its engine. It'd be lovely to have this. Anyway, a CH-46 EC-9. I don't know what that is, but it's 550 range. It's a little bit faster. There's its crew. There's its cargo and passengers. There's its empty weight. That's heavy. Very heavy. Um, 17,000 feet. We can have a 2 times Gal 15, which is the M2, uh, 1 times uh, M2, uh, blah, 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 M240. Uh, no, it's this medium lift Hello, heli helo is intended for troop transport, but also can supply FARPs, perform search and rescue, uh, rescue crews, crash planes, medivac. Vert, what's vert rep? And more vertical replenishment. Uh, how that works is that uh, you can re resupply ships and such by different methods. This this refers to using uh, helicopters to just lift it up instead of using like a conveyor or something. Roger. Okay. Osprey. We all know what the Osprey is. It's the thing from Terminator. Nine hundred nautical miles. Interesting. I've never had a chance to look at statistics of an Osprey before. Speed is how fast are we knots. Wow, up to three hundred knots. Pretty good actually. There's a crew, there's our passenger on our cargo, there's our empty max takeoffs. It's a heavy bitch, it's a heavy bitch. Service ceiling can't go very high, can it? Weapons um, one times M240 or uh, one times M2 Browning and a Gal, 7, Gal 17 mini gun. Now, this craft uses rotating rotors for either vertical lift or as rotor blades for forward flight. This craft was created after the Iran hostage crisis showed a need for a craft that had a long combat radius. It would, sup then it would supplement, then replace the CH 46's in the US Marine Corps, which is that one we just looked there. Very good. Super Stallion, we know what that is CH 53E, 540. Range, there's our speed, there's our crew as a passenger. Takeoff is a real heavy son of a gun, it's heavier than an F 15. Service ceiling, big heavy engines. Um, we can have three times GAL 21s. What's a GAL 21? Is that the M signed off the M2, right? So M3M. M3M, M3, oh right, yeah, so it's an M3M, understood. Okay, also a chest and fill engine launches. Note the US Marine Corps, a heavy lift three engine helo related to the PAVE low can be used to transport light armor vehicles or use an assault transport for a large marine group resupply. A really cool helicopter that is. Sea Dragon, which is going to be a, something different by the looks of things. A special sea version, maybe? Yeah, uh, uh, this one's used for, like, uh, mine sweeping. Hmm. Okay, I won't go through all the stats, but anything that's of particular interest of the Sea Dragon uh, type? Yeah, I just go over underneath the gun. It's like, That's where it's different. It's got, like, a... A sonar, it can tow, it can tow like a um, magnetic mine sweeping sled. So like, 
last time how I mentioned how mines work off of uh, magnetic resonance or whatever. Mm -hmm. This will use that to trigger mines, and it's also got like a little blade thing that will rake across the bottom of the sea blade, uh, seaboard to cut the uh, the tethers for the mines and just cause them to float to the surface. First attack helicopter is an AH-1W Super Cobra. Range that. Uh, speed that. Pretty impressive. No cargo. Fairly light. Low service ceiling. Weapons. It can have a Mike 197 Gatling gun with 750 rounds. Uh, that's attached to it, isn't it? That's hard mounted. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yep, it's got a chin mounted uh, turret. Roger, what millimeters is that? Do we know? Don't know, do we? Uh, pretty much it's the same as the as the minigun, but it's just uh, less barrels. Okay, I thought it was 20 mil, mil but I may be wrong. Uh, plus four um, pylons carrying Lao 68. Uh, These are rocket launchers. It's got seven or 19 tube. Uh, we've got Lao 68 seven shot. What's that? That type of rocket there. Interesting. We've um, got a Lao 10 D. Oh, the Sudi rockets. So these are these are medium caliber. These are high caliber. Oh yeah, uh, that that uh, rocket up there. That one's pretty cool. Same. Think of it as sort of like what you remember how like with Hellfires they'd use that to hit uh, exact targets. Mm -hmm. Well, that turned out to be really expensive. So what they did was they came up with a system that um, you can unscrew the uh, warhead on a Hydra seventy, screw this in. Screw like a little winglet system that has uh, laser sensors at the end of the winglets, and then put the warhead back on. Then you pretty much just guide it like you would a laser guided okay. I had missile. No, no idea such a thing existed. Right, we don't have that in DCS at the moment, but that sounds cool. Almost sounds like a, uh, a Vickers from a KA50 or something. What an interesting piece of kit. Right, okay, all done, Daishi. Sunni rockets, uh, not guided, but heavy duty. Got a BGM-71 tow missile, um, two or four missiles each, three kilometers. So these are guided anti-tank missiles, aren't they? Yep. It seemed like you'd see on, like, uh, Humpies and the uh, oh, Avengers, I think they are. Roger. Okay, got the Hellfire there and the AGM-144. We'll get that in DCS at some point, I'm sure. Uh, guided uh, medium-range missiles up to 11 kilometers, taking out tanks and similar. Uh, we've got the, oh, Sidewinders, AIM-9L Sidewinder, uh, which you all know about from DCS for air-to-air. -air. That's interesting. Uh, didn't know this, but we're all learning today. AGM-122 Sidearm, which we've got in DCS, which is pretty useless, to be honest, but it's cool that we've got it. Um, it's an AIM-9C. Uh, it was converted from air-to-air to air-to-ground -air to air -to anti-radiation. Very good. Some sources state that it's, it can carry bombs. Size and type are unknown. Fuel tanks of unknown capacity. Notes Attack helicopter based off the UH-1 family, first appearing in Vietnam. US Marine Corps has kept the design over the years, given the airframe numerous upgrades over the years. This particular version is nicknamed as a whiskey helicopter. Very good. Okay, we've got the Harrier, and we're not going to go through it in this video because um, we've got so many videos on the Harriers now, but that, like I said, this is linked in the video description, so come down here. Anything you want to point out on the Harrier of particular interest, Aishi? Um, the neat thing about the Mark 80 bombs that I was learning about, um, they don't come built when you have them on carriers and such. They attach the the wings and the sensors, so you'd have the bomb boss, the body of the bomb, and then you could either turn it into like a GBU or like a JSAW or something like that. Modular, so they're completely modular. Yep. How interesting. Okay, fair enough. Interestingly, they got J downs. We don't have them in DCS. I think we are getting them at some point. So it looks like we're going to be getting those J dams. And is there anything else? We've got that. We've got that. Uh, got that. Got that. Got that. Don't have a fire bomb, so maybe we'll get that. Maybe we won't. Do we've got a rock eye? Uh, GB twelve sixteen. We've got those. We've got got got. Haven't got. We haven't got the APKWS. Um, the uh, laser guided rockets. Maybe we'll get that one day. We'll see. We've got the Gal twelve. I got wrong in the video I did about the thing. Uh, don't, uh, yeah, that's it. Cool, very good, Doishi. Right, notes, do you want to read the notes out here? Uh, this ship class was designed with the purpose to deliver, to deliver the uh, 21 flavors of paint that is the uh, U.S. Marine Corps. Hmm. It's equipped with a heavy amount of helicopters, aircraft, and landing boats. This ship boasts a large suite of sensors to assist in managing all of its assets. It can also be equipped for humanitarian aid using its large amount of helicopters and helicopters. Uh, marines to render aid in any crisis more or less this ship is either your salvation or damnation 
Also, since this ship focuses most of its space on carrying Marine Corps assets, it only has point defenses and do not leave this ship without an escort in a potential combat scenario. Roger. And also, I noticed it has the SPS-49 radar in place of the 40. Most of the uh, 40s were replaced by the 49s as part of the the new threat upgrade when uh, when the Soviets were starting to focus on a swarm attack, so that, that was designed to help deal with it, but I don't think they had a model for it, so they just put the 49 there. Okay, very good. Images, uh, we've got the naval Huey. Oh, that looks cool. I wish we had that. A sea knight. That's a Chinook, or is it? I mean, it completely looks like a Chinook to me. I think it? they're relatives of each other. Yeah, right. I I think it, yeah, it must be. Uh, Super Stallion. Same aircraft. Roger. Hi, uh, hi RC. Um, Super Stallion, which is, is the old Jolly Green Giant, isn't it? Yep. Amazing helicopter. It'd be great if we got that one day. Super Cobra. <laughs> Send. And it's got that little Humvee under it. It's making it look so tiny. Yeah, I mean, some, we get them in armor, and they just they dwarf everything. Super Cobra, which I think we will get in DCS at some point. Offspray, which everyone knows about. It's a really cool thing. The awesome, um, um, oh, I was about to say speedboat, uh, hovercraft, which is cool. We've got the LCU-1610 class. Ah, so these are what these look like. Right, fascinating. So that's uh, just a big, it's like a big World War II landing craft that the front goes down and plung. Okay, LCM-8, small version of it. LCM-6, even smaller version of it. Uh, ooh, ugliest thing in the world, the LVPT-5. Okay, so that's basically a troop-carrying thing that can drive onto the beaches. Uh, the This one, the AAVP-7, I think. That's the one we get, we've get. got in DCS. Uh, it can drive, on, drive troops onto the beach and fight with its 40 mic mic. And uh, we've got, oh, look at that. We've got the Mike uh, H53, uh, we've got the Sea Stallion carrying the Mark 103. What's that telling us? Doishi? That's the uh, that's the minesweeper, the Big Neck minesweeper. Is, is that what, what that thing in the sea? Is that it? Yep, it's a sled that you just run across the surface trying to trigger mines. Wow, that's so cool. Awesome. Okay, we're going to the superstructure of the LHH now. Possible radar identifications. Oh, Daishi, you're going to have to go through this. Uh, what's the SP-49? Uh, that's the, uh, what, and then that's standing in for the SPS-40, the air search. The 43 is the air control radar. Uh, it was a 54 on the top, I believe. That's 64 on the that's top. Surface, uh, 64. That's yep, that's surface search and navigation. Yep. And then, and then the ray dome down there is for like a uh, guiding aircraft in, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it's that exact ray dome mm -hmm. or if that ray dome's for uh, uh, SATCOM. Roger, we've got an SPS 48E, which is like a big 3D uh, air search. Is that what it is? SPS 48E yep. at the front. Yeah, that's that. And just remind me again, what was the radar? What was the SPS 49? Uh, that's supposed to be the SPS 40. That's like mm -hmm. uh, air and surface search. Right. Interesting. So something we can look at in the model. Here's the sources. Please make use of this document. Thank you for putting so much work into that Daishi and uh, giving to that to us. Uh, sorry we had to rush through it, but you know we can't make a three-hour video at the end of the day. Next, we're going to jump into DCS and uh, do stuff. Okay, welcome into DCS. Here is our model. It's a high-definition model, so the, it's high definition in terms of graphics. It's high definition in terms of interactivity and damage model. It's a lovely model, as you can see there. Plenty of detail. You can see the various things we've got here. Um, so if we look at the superstructure here, Daiichi, anything of interest that you want to point out on there? Yeah, on the uh, the front mast, do you see that little bar that was spinning? That's like right in front of the dome. That one's the Mark 21 that was used for, well, it's behind the, the, the mast there. Are you kind of want to get that, a little... Are we talking that there? And now forward just a bit. You, you see it? It's kind of like hiding there behind the, yeah. the side mask. Navigation. Yeah. Uh, that one is the Sea Sparrow Search. Oh, is it? Are you sure? Yep. Yep. It's uh, it's pretty much about the same bar. It's just a little thicker. Okay. Fair enough. Right. Interesting. I see. Uh, um, that looks like a fire control radar. That does. I may be completely wrong. Is that a thing? I'm not sure that 
That could be a fire control radar that was left behind. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Interesting. I can see we've got a first... Or... Yeah? It could be used as a stand-in for one of the... The Sea Sparrow tracks, but I don't think so. I think we'll see it. When, once we get it firing, I think we'll see what it does. We've got... Um, how many miniguns were there? How many um, Sea Whizzes? Were there four or six? Uh, or two. Oh. There's two Sea Whizzes, two Ram Launchers, which if you see that blocky thing yeah, towards the end here. Oh. That's your ram launcher, although it's usually shouldn't be pointing up. That's interesting. So that's a ram launcher. So these are the sidewinder type missiles, right? Yep. How and the other ones should be on the superstructure towards the front of the ship. Stand by. Also, if you look down real quick, uh, you see where that door is? Okay. That's where the well deck is. It. What you do is you flood the well deck once you get your boats loaded up, and then you open that out, and then they go out towards uh, wherever. So our hovercrafts and stuff will just bomb out there. How interesting. Mm -hmm. Lovely detailed model. That other, yep, um, it's on the top there, on, oh, sitting there on top is, of the right. bridge. There it is, look, yep. Excellent. I look forward to seeing that firing then. Uh, where are our sea sparrows? Do we have sea sparrows in this model, do you think? Nope. Uh, I would have seen them by now. Okay, so we've got our 3D, we got our 3D radar there. Looking as it normally does look. The other antennas, as we've spoken about. Um, see if there's anything else of interest there. Look in yes. real quick. Uh, towards the top, in between the two masts, I thought I saw the slick there. Uh, do you see where the uh, the ray dome is, and right in front of you, you got like a little blocky thing? Yeah. That's part of the slick 32, although that's like a side look on it. What is it? That's the uh, the slick or S S cube. SLQ-32, or as we like to call the Slick-32. You should have one on the other side, too, and that's the, like your... That's like your RWR plus ECM plus... Uh, yep. It also connects with the shaft, and it also connects with the RAM. Interesting. Very good. Okay. Excellent. Um, oh, is that the navigation radar there, then? Yep, that one's it. Right, I get it now. God, these things are complicated, aren't they? Okay, um, anything else you want to look at before we start doing things with it? Not in particular, like, it's just guessing which ray domes are, like, SATCOM and which ones are for, like, the guiding end of, uh, craft, which I'm assuming would probably be, like, a, uh, shoot, I forgot what it was, TAC, uh, TAC -an, I think? No, it's got no offensive abilities, apart from the aircraft, which we can use on it. We can use the Harriers, as you know, on this, we can spawn them from this, and they can operate from here, but we're not going to look at the Harriers today. Uh, so we can just look at the ship. So instead, we're going to make it fight another ship. So look at its surface-to-surface -surface ability in terms of defense. And uh, see how that goes. So stand by as we go and add in an opponent. Oh yeah, one thing I forgot to add about the uh, about the ram launcher. When it was being tested, it found, it's found that it had about a 90% success rate against, uh, against like targets that they tested against. So it should be a pretty hard for it. Uh, the thing I'm also going to find interesting is, is it going to have enough shells to actually sink the Tawara tor tor if it gets close wow. enough? I don't think it will. <laughs> so welcome back. Uh, one thing I forgot to show is how to actually uh, move this thing about and operate it. So if I go to choose slot, I'll go to a game master or I could go to a tactical commander of that coalition. Click our name here and I can set a path here and I can put a path for going there and there. Left click, left click, right click to confirm. That's him going on that path. I can change his speed here. Miles per hour. I'm just going to put his max, which is about 26 knots, 24 knots. His state here. I'm having red, green, or auto. So if I'm expecting combat, battle station is red. His uh, ROE, whether we want him to fire, return fire only, or hold. And we're going to have him as fire there. And if we wanted to attack something, we'd attack, add target there and stop attack. But it, it has no offensive abilities like that. So... It's, uh, it's superfluous. He is fighting against our friend here, who is a Type 54A modern Chinese frigate, which is a very, very good piece of kit. It's got harpoon equivalent missiles. You can see them opening up there, ready to fire. And um, so we're just looking at our defensive capabilities. It's going to be a broadside attack or about a 45 degree broadside attack. So we'll see how it goes. Missile out, missile out. That was quick. Those are the Chinese harpoons. I was expecting it to go uh, all four. Let's see how our guy does to defend. Is he going to defend? Is he? Because sometimes the ships just don't work in DCS for reasons that we haven't figured out yet. Let's look for any antennas that are starting to turn or become 
interested. There's nothing obvious. Okay. Oh, they missile. are short-ranged missiles. I used to think that... You see that ghost ship effect? I used to think that was a bug, but that happens in real ships, Daishi. Did you know that? I've done a video about I it. Could it hasn't released yet, but... See that happening is like a mirage. It is. It is a mirage. It's because of the density of the water. Flips... Um, uh, um, oh, I'll just wait till my video comes out. Right, we're watching our YJ-83. Is he going to defend himself? Uh, what are we expecting to come out here, the Sidewinders? Yeah, should be getting a ram pretty short now. Looking for the ram? Yeah, should be ramming. Should pretty check the distance. Six miles, so it should be coming out soon if it works. Popping up. Come on, defend yourself, you mug. I hate it when they don't defend themselves. Really? It's set to red, so it should work. Don't make me shout whack, no, I'll do it. Not gonna defend itself though, is So frustrating, uh, that doesn't work. But well, why did it work during a coffee campaign when everything else didn't? Now it's just like, nah, bruh. I don't know, it's, it's just not work. Ships just aren't working in DCS at the moment, October 2019. It's very frustrating for us trying to make videos. Uh, there's not much we can do, it's, just, you know, it's half dead now. He's set to red, I know it says green there, but you know, we set it to red and it just goes back to green, so something's just not working. He is an official enemy ship, everything should be working, um, but they just don't defend themselves. It's very frustrating, so well, I guess we just got to watch him slowly die. I don't know, I mean, like, you got to consider the fact that it took four of those missiles and it didn't even, it just barely cracked the quarter of the health. I'm not sure if it has enough ammo. This is weird. Well, we'll see, yeah. I'm surprised he's not fired his next four, question mark. It's probably because it's on the other side. You oh, probably would have to on the other side, do a hard right. turn. Right, so, okay, we've got to wait for the gun now, but you can't evade a gun, obviously. Well, he's certainly not going to be able to defend himself now. Oh uh, yeah, this is why he should escort it, but still, it should have been able to shot the uh, deal with those cruise mm. Yeah, I don't know what's going on at the moment. All right, come on, bullet! Oh, there we go! Boom, boom, boom! Impact in the superstructure. Impact on the bow. Can I get to you an idea of the scale of the ship with just how small those actual hits are? Oh, no. Hip. And hit the camera. <laughs> I have to admit that I would have expected a little more accurate. Yeah, it's a big ship as well, isn't it? Has he got enough rounds to kill him? I was suspecting it didn't. You think you'd get more accurate as he gets closer? Yeah, we're getting, well. look at all the hits we're getting now. Getting hits. Getting pummeled, boys. Oh! I I'm just wondering if it's just maybe it's not configured against that third missile. I 
Oh, look at those heads in the superstructure, boys. Yeah, that looked rough. Oh, I was almost dead, look. I was saying it had a really good damage model, but nothing seems to be blowing off it, like none of the radomes or anything. Okay, it's dead. God, that took forever. But it is finally dead. And I think the... it ran out of ammo. Oh, it ran out of ammo. How about that? Yeah, is that I it? think it might have. So it survived. Right. She still has a uh, health bar. Yeah, right. So, yeah, my bad. We have indeed survived the onslaught. Right. Uh, well, that's probably the worst fight we've ever seen because it was completely one-sided. And this idiot just refused to defend himself as they seem to do nowadays, which is annoying. Um, not much else we can show surface to surface, so I guess we'll now show if it can detect, if it can fight me in an aeroplane, so stand by. Okay, we're going on at F5. Let's see how well we do. RWR search on. Hostile arm on. Let's see if we can take down an LHA. Right, so we've got nails unknown search radar off the nose. And I can see her already. It's so big. Has to speed up the inevitable fight. That's the thing I'm interested in because most of the stuff, like it's got the track radar for a, from the Sea Sparrow, but doesn't have any real tracking. So I'm not sure if we're even going to get a track notice. Interesting. It'd be interesting. So we think it doesn't have the sure. Sea Sparrow. Yeah, we're not entirely sure what version we've got because we could have any version through history here. I'm going to speed up now and see if I do get some kind of lock. Okay, we have a track finally. Yep, we've got an unknown track and a something. And That's Rams. Let's just go and see what that is. Ah, it, it, so it looks like this is a RIM 7. That looks... No, this has name 7, Daishi. There must what? Be an, no, that, that's a Sparrow. Why? Because it must be an older version uh, of the ship than what we see. Oh. It must be a 90s version of the ship, mustn't it? I know what they're doing. What's They're that? using it as a placeholder for the for the ram missiles. They're using the Sparrow model as a placeholder. Interesting. Okay. Well, because those launchers are not big enough to hold a Sparrow at, at all. Oh, I see what you mean. So they've got the they've got the um, the ram launchers, but they're actually firing weird sparrows at me. Is that what we think? Yeah, that's what it looks like to me. Yeah, because that there is a Sparrow. That's not. There's nothing there that's sidewindery. So, interesting. Wagner! Okay, well, um, anyway, let's go and uh, try and beat that and probably fail. Love a HUD right now. The other possibility is, is that they might be trying to use the ram launcher as the sp Sparrow, but that would be... Roger, what I'd like to see is where that Sparrow is coming out of, if it's coming out of those ram launchers, or... Let's go back in, boys. There's a missile out. Dodge, dodge, dodge. Let's see if we can get under his radar. Go in again. Oh, I do like my F5. Missile out. Let's go see what type it is. Okay, check it's the same. I really want to see where it comes from. So annoying. Can you zoom in on the uh, LHA when it fires the next one? Uh, it's really hard to know when it fires. Like, you could track the smoke plume. It should be able to help track down where it came from. We'll look. Yeah, I should be able to see it coming right out now. Stop. Go. Stand by. It's coming from... I was just coming out of nowhere, look. 
It's just coming out of the superstructure. That's a bit disappointing, isn't it? Or the chimney or something weird. Yeah, it's just coming out of the center of the model. Roger, so just, uh, just never did it uh, by the looks of things. It's a bit disappointing. It's been a good model so far. That said, it also, I thought it had a high damage model. It doesn't. You can't actually do any physical damage to it in terms of blowing turrets off and stuff. So it's fairly weak, but it is what it is. At least it looks nice. Right, I've still got to beat this Daishi, so... If it's firing sparrows, then it's going to... Basically, you're operating the same as if you're fighting against an F-14. Yeah, pretty much. That's what I'm, I'm hoping for. Oh, no, 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 you don't, no, you don't, woohoo, ah, got me, ship wins, okay, here comes the cash town, I mean, the sea whiz, whatever, oh, god, yeah, it's like it's VLSing the, uh, yeah, the sparrow, that isn't must it? be how it's simulating it, oh, it fires the, the sea whiz is miles away, stop shooting at me, you give up, you win, Cool picture. That's a good picture. Oh, that is cool. <laughs> cool, right? Gotta get the right angle. Get some. <laughs> Look at that. Brrr. Brrr. Right, let's see if I can survive this. Hey! Oh my goodness! Something is happening. Oh, Wagner! Wagner! We have a saying for this in Space Engineers, we like to call this clang. Look, he's getting me, they're still firing at me. That's funny. That's kind of interesting. I've never quite studied about there being an anti-gravity device on this ship. Oh yeah, no, there was. It's kept secret. Um, so, guys, we've... Uh, I mean, the anti-air defense, it's no bloody S-300, you know, from a Moskva, but it's it's, it's okay. It, it, you can't get in close. For some reason, it doesn't defend itself against missiles. Again, we think ships just aren't working properly at the moment. Anything you boys want to add to that? It would be kind of neat to see some of the other helicopters modeled. I know that's me asking for, like, six different modules, but... Roger. I mean, like... Well, it'd be nice to have them on the... on the, Even just as models, if you know what I mean, on the... Sitting on the ship. I was just, oh look, I managed to get inside it there, look at that. <laughs> Funny. Yeah, okay, well, I know it was a bit of a weird test, but it's kind of hard to test this thing. Oh, thank you guys, and I'll see you later.